Hi, in this video, we will walk through the process of visually mapping data to our knowledge graph concepts directly from our database. To recap, the mapping stage comes after we have created a concept. On a side note, it can also be done while creating the concept, which I will show in this video, but for now, let's begin with the standard approach. To enter the data mapper, we'll click on the model tab above and choose data mapper. In the data mapper, we will choose the knowledge graph we are working on. So let's go ahead and choose our telecommunications knowledge graph. Once chosen, we can see all the existing mappings our knowledge graph already has. We see the target concepts of the mappings, the data sources the tables reside in, and the actual tables mapped to the concepts. On the right, we can see a pop-up of the SQL query used in the mapping. And we can also choose to edit or delete a mapping, but for now, let's create a new mapping. To begin mapping data to our knowledge graph, we'll click on Map Data. In the window that appears, we have three different mapping options. To map data to a concept, to map data to a relationship, in the case of a many-to-many -many relationship, or to map data to a property, in case of a multi-value property. For now, we'll continue with the concept mapping, as the relationships and property mappings will have videos of their own. So we'll click on Create Concept Mapping and begin. Once the mapping tool opens, we can see the mapping information, starting from the name of the mapping that can be changed by clicking on it. On the top right, we have an option to choose the mapping method. For now, we will continue with the visual method, but in the following videos, we will also cover the SQL mapping method. Below the mapping name, we can see the chosen knowledge graph, the chosen data source, which in this case, our knowledge graph is only connected to MySQL, and next, we need to choose the schema. When clicking on it, it indicates to select a schema from the list below. So let's choose the calls schema. And now Timber loads the list of tables in that schema, while separating between tables that were already mapped to the knowledge graph and tables that weren't yet. Let's continue and choose the table we're going to map, in this case, contracts. In the next stage, we will choose the concept we want to assign this mapping to. We can also create a new concept based on this mapping on the top right, but in our case, we will choose the concept contract as the data relates to contract information. Now, we get to the final stage of the mapping, matching the columns of the table to the properties of our concept. We can do the matching manually by choosing the properties one by one. We can see the timber has automatic suggestions for best match and also automatic cast functions when the data type in the table are not the same as the data types of the property we defined for the concept. We can also decide to perform our own cast function or any other transformation ourselves by clicking on the toggle on the left. In this window, we can apply any SQL function our database supports, in this case, MySQL. In addition to the manual matching, Timber is able to automatically match between the columns and the properties by clicking on Add All Suggestions. Once clicked, we can see that Timber was able to match 5 out of 5. It is always recommended to check this indicator and see if Timber was able to match all the columns and properties or perhaps we need to intervene a bit ourselves. At this stage, before saving and creating the mapping, we can also apply filters and conditions on the data that will be mapped to the concept by clicking on the Filters button. And here, we can choose the column we would like to apply the filter on, the type of filter or condition we want to set, and the relevant value. Another way to apply the filters for those who prefer to do so in SQL is to click on the toggle on the left and apply the SQL query that will set the filters or conditions. You can also click on Add Filter in case you need to create more complex scenarios with AND or OR clauses. Once everything is set and we're ready to go, we'll click on Create Mapping and we're done. We can now see the new mapping associated with our concept contract. And at any point, we can edit or delete this mapping. To validate the data, let's go back to our Knowledge Graph model in the Ontology Explorer. We'll now click on the Contract concept, and we'll fetch sample data. And there we have it. We can now see the successful mapping results. Of course, as mentioned at the beginning, we can create, edit, or delete a concept mapping directly from the Ontology Explorer by simply right-clicking on a concept and choosing Mapping. So just like that, in no time, we were able to map data to a concept without having to move any data or use any code at all. In our next videos, we will cover topics such as creating mappings with SQL queries, as well as creating mappings to a many-to-many -many relationship, to a multi-value property, and additional features we have in the platform. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.